Hi, in this video we're going to study inelastic collisions. Collision basically means two things run into each other. There's forces involved, um, but we're going to see that we can relate this to conservation momentum and make it really pretty simple. In any collision, we're always going to consider momentum to be conserved. Typically, if there's any external forces, they occur so quickly that they don't really matter. Collisions happen very, very quickly, short periods of time. Um, in an inelastic collision, that means that the objects physically stick or lock together after the collision. Think about two pieces of Velcro colliding and then sticking together. That would be an example of an inelastic collision. When two objects stick together, you can treat them as a single object whose mass is simply the sum of the masses of the original two objects. So when two things stick together, you can treat them as one thing until such time as when they don't stick together anymore. In an inelastic collision, lots of kinetic energy is lost. So if we remember from our last video, we had explosions where momentum was, or excuse me, where kinetic energy was gained. In an inelastic collision, we're going to lose kinetic energy. And where it goes, we'll figure out later. So, for an example, suppose we have a head on collision between these two objects a 4 kilogram red object going to the right at 2 meters per second, and an 8 kilogram blue object going the other way at 2 meters per second. Our first step, since this is a closed system, is to figure out what the total momentum of the system is. And so finding the momentum of each thing individually, adding them up, will tell me that the total momentum is negative 8 kilogram meters per second. And so after these things stick together, we would predict that they're going to go to the left. So this is a closed system. That means the momentum after they collide will be negative 8 kilogram meters per second as well, since momentum is conserved. We'll figure that they move to the left because that momentum is negative. If I take the negative 8 kilogram meters per second of momentum, divide by the total mass, That'll tell me what the velocity of the two is after the collision. And so the total mass of this system is 12. 4 plus 8 is 12 kilograms. And so dividing negative 8 by 12 gives me something like negative 2 thirds meters per second. So these two objects are stuck together, moving slowly to the left. We might also want to know how much energy is lost. So what I'm going to do is figure out how much kinetic energy we started with and then how much kinetic energy we ended with and subtract. So remember, kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. So plugging in the one-half mv squared for both objects, I would get 8 joules of energy for the red one, 16 for the blue one, for a total of 24 joules. After the collision, I've got one object, so I only need to do one kinetic energy equation, whose mass is 12, and the velocity is 2 thirds, and so the final kinetic energy is like 2.7 joules. Subtracting, we would figure out that the difference is negative 21.3. That means we lost 21.3 joules of energy as a result of this collision. Let's look at another example. This one's going to be kind of like a rear end collision. We have a slow blue object of mass 20 kilograms moving to the right at 5 meters per second. And it get, gets run into from behind by a blue 10 kilogram object moving at 10 meters per second. So this would be like modeling a situation where a slow car that's big gets rear ended by a slower, faster car. Afterwards, they stick together, and again, we want to figure out how fast they're going. 
same game, but figure out what the momentum of my system is. So the momentum of the red object plus the momentum of the blue object. Here they're both going to be positive since they're moving in the same direction. And so they each have a momentum of 100 kilogram meter per second. And so the total is 200 kilogram meters per second. This is a closed system. Momentum is conserved. So I'm going to write that the total after the collision is 200 kilogram meters per second as well. Since they're stuck together, I treat them as one object. I simply take that momentum divided by that total mass, which is 30. And that would give me something like 6.7 meters per second. We've got a positive answer that tells me that they're going to the right, just like we probably would have guessed. So in this situation, the blue object speeds up when it gets rear-ended from behind. The red object slows down. And so that velocity is somewhere in between them. So a situation like this, we can check our answer for reasonableness. This answer needs to be somewhere between 10 and 5. 6.7, somewhere in between 10 and 5. We've got a reasonable answer. We probably did it correctly. So see if you can do this problem on your own. You've got two objects one of mass m, the other of 2m. The red object moves to the right at 5v. The blue object moves to the left at 3v. Afterwards, they're going to stick together, and it's your job to see if you can figure out how fast they're going. So press pause, see if you can do that, and then press play again, check for my solution. Okay, let's look and see how I would have done this. I would first figure out what the total momentum of the system is. So find the momentum of the blue object, add it to the momentum of the red object. Here I've given the blue object a negative velocity since it's going to the left. And so we would have something like 5mv minus 6mv, which would give us negative mv. The negative sign tells me that these things are going to go to the left after they collide. Momentum is conserved in this situation, so I'm going to write that P prime equals negative mv. And so the velocity can be found by dividing that momentum by the mass of the two objects together. The mass of the two objects together will be m plus 2m which is 3m. Those m's will cancel out for us, meaning that our new velocity, v prime, is equal to negative one-third v. So they both slow down by a lot as a result of this head-on collision. You might also express that as one-thirds v to the left, depending on how you're exactly asked to phrase your answer. So if we were successful in that problem, we should feel pretty good about ourselves. If not, then we'll do some more examples in class, do a lot of practice together until we get a good understanding of exactly how to set up these problems and how to work them using conservation and momentum. So be sure to bring these notes and examples to class. We'll do more practice together.